Hello everyone, it's the Last Raider. We are back again with another video on why you do not bow the knee. You do not bend the knee, you do not bow down, you do not kowtow. These SJW monsters that are online, and they are monsters, they are terrorists. So, let's jump in here. Arrowverse star Stephen Mel accused of racism by fans, including Image Comics author T. Franklin. Hmm... Yeah, this isn't going to end well. So, for those who don't understand, there's been prior outrage to The Flash. Um, we've had a whole bunch of outrage and everything happening, you know, over the whole George Floyd situation and all that, which I've been trying to avoid because I don't want to get dragged down in that mire pit because it's, it's pointless to even give an opinion on it. Nobody wants my opinion, so... Anyone did it's it's like it's like where Don Lemon was sitting on the internet and he got or sitting on TV and he said I want to know I want to know what this president has to say and the president comes out and says something and said nobody asked you to come out here and give your opinion like a jilted girlfriend uh, <laughs> so anyway we're not gonna worry about this stuff up here because I'm gonna tell you, give you the lowdown basically Flash stars Harley Sawyer and Danielle Pettenberger uh, they've they've uh, managed to cancel. Hartley, they're attempting to cancel Danielle right now. Hartley got canceled over tweets, as usual, um, which were kind of spicy uh, and edgelordish. But then Danielle Pendebrecker comes along, and she just she simply goes in and supports. It, it's all a bunch of bullshit to try and get rid of her. They, uh, they're they mad at her because she went out there and humored some fans about a ship where her character gets together with Barry Allen instead of Iris West. And, oh my God, you know, how dare a group of fans out there who likes <clears throat> her acting want her to get together with Barry Allen, even though she has her character has more in common with Barry Allen and than Iris West does. And Iris West is... Uh, She's always coming off as the character that is, oh, you know, she she almost will handle everything. She's almost become a Mary Sue to a point in the show. I, I finally recently where she's running the whole Flash crew. I'm like, why? What what qualifications does she have in journalism that? Man, I figured at least she'd be like you know story arc wise, she'd be the person they would call you know you know give a good line of bull crap. She doesn't even do that. <clears throat> well, apparently everyone got mad over at Steve Amell on his podcast, so we're going to snip on down here to what he has to say. I think one of the, because he's talking about police departments and everything else, I think one of the shitty things is, you know, you and I through Knocking Point and through these parties and just in general, you know, in life, We've met a lot of police officers who are really, really great people. And we've been noticing on Instagram and Twitter, these various police chiefs thinking about the one in Flint, Michigan. And I believe there was one in Houston as well. They're putting down their batons and their weapons and they're marching with everyone. And they're saying, look, this is, we can march. But if you're going to step out of line and you're going to wreck things in our city, we're not going to stand for it because this is our city. You see the emotion on their faces, and it would be really tough to dedicate yourself to a job that is as perilous and, you know, dangerous as law enforcement. Be passionate about it and have it ruined by a few bad apples. <clears throat> and this is true. <clears throat> law enforcement, <clears throat> for those of you who don't know, I had a family member of mine who was in law enforcement, and he said over 85% of the cops in law enforcement are good people. He said, the problem is they have a paycheck and they have to run a job. And he said, you'll have a small, like, I want to say 2%, probably more than that, are just straight up cowards. They go into the police department for a badge and a gun so they can protect themselves. And then after it's over with, they just up and run. Then you have the other percent, which is the second smallest minority in police and they're just freaking bullies that's basically the guy that was sitting on george floyd's neck okay they're they're the ones you're trying to get rid of and because of that very very tiny minority that doesn't even make up 
a fifth of a percent or doesn't even make up five percent we now have calls to completely disband the entire department all of police altogether and we're seeing in uh was it the Chaz? how that's working out right now they're under control of a warlord and i tell people all the time look and, and, and i'm going to explain this very simply to people you give up civil law natural law takes effect there is nothing that supersedes natural law except civility and respect. Once you get rid of civil law and go to natural law, it's very, very hard to get from natural law back to civil law because natural law is based on who's stronger. You have to get violent at some point and you have to shed blood to get from natural law to civil law. It's very easy to go from civil law to natural law because that is just the natural order of things. Civil law is a is the law of higher thinking individuals. Okay? This idea of mutual respect and belief in mutual rights. You go from civil law, which everyone agrees upon, which is basically an agreement by everyone not to interfere and we're going to punish whoever does break the law, to natural law, which is I'm stronger than you, so I'm going to do what I want. You have to whoop and beat down and possibly kill every single strong man in natural law before you can come back to civil law. <clears throat> okay, you have to send in really, really dangerous individuals to get yourself back out of, to get people back out of natural law to civil law. Police officers do this a lot. Or they, they're, that's what they're to do. They're a law enforcement agency. It's what they're supposed to do. Enforce the law. Now, when they act offline, this is where I kind of get irritated at police unions. A police officer should not get any special privileges when going to court. Okay. What they should get is the same type of attorney rights that every other average citizen gets. This is where I say, you know, police unions need to be done away with completely. They have not helped this situation. They have exacerbated the situation. Uh, the situation we're dealing with right now, it's, it's just getting worse. But anyway, that's, that's my steal. That, that's how I feel about the whole law enforcement thing. I like the idea of having cops. Somebody's got to take the body away after I get done shooting them if they come through my door. Okay? <laughs> also, I would like to have my gun laws. I, I don't want... Actually, no. I take that back. I like my gun laws that I got in this state. I would really love it, though, if they would just do away with all the gun laws because I'm a Second Amendment absolutist. If I want a hind D... If I want an MI-35 attack helicopter fully outfitted and loaded before home defense, I should have a fully outfitted... MI-35 attack helicopter for home defense. And that's the only reason I need to have that. And, and that reason alone is enough to need that MI-37 fully outloaded with all the rockets and machine guns, 20 millimeter and all that stuff is for home defense. And when people say, well, how are you going to get to it? Well, what if I'm over at the airport where I keep it at, where I'd keep it at? And some, my wife says, someone's trying to beat down the door. We can fly it over there. It's just an armament that I have over there that I can get to from point A to point B real quick. I can fly over there, take care of the problem, come back to the airport, possibly, you know, take care of the problem, land it in the field right outside my house, talk to my wife, you know, get everything squared away, the police cart off the body, we take the helicopter over to, I don't know, to Burger King over in the town far enough away because they've got an airport, they've got like a, a field right next to it, we get a couple cheeseburgers and come back. The police need some support. I'd be willing to support them with this attack helicopter. I don't know why I can't have it. I mean, I'd be responsible with a damn thing. It's not like I'm going to go shoot a school with it. But anyway, continuing on. When I say a few bad apples, okay, when I say a few bad apples, that could come off as trivializing it. It could come off as a little pippy. I'm talking about a percentage of people in law enforcement, a very small percentage who are effing ruining it for people who, frankly, the majority of law enforcement should be celebrated and they should be lauded and they should be paid more than they're paid. And I think it's a real shame that the name of law enforcement and the same and some of the vitriol that good police officers are having to deal with, male, female, black, white, brown, doesn't matter, that aren't part of the problem but are identified with the problem. And this is the same thing with like gun ownership and geeks and gamers. We can all attest to this nonsense, okay? I hit all those categories except police officer we have lived in an age for the past five six years where if you're a gamer you're an automatic sexist uh, you're a sexist because of a few morons 
actually, actually, no, you're a sexist because of a couple of dumb, immature 13-year-olds who don't know how to act in real life and haven't had a good ass whooping. Okay? A gun owner is a monster because some maniac with mental issues went to a school and shot it up. Therefore, all our rights need to be taken away. The games need to be re- redesigned from the ground up to be less sexist. Um, pick a genre. Okay, comic book guys, they're just, they're racist, misogynists. They want their racist, misogynist propaganda. And we're going to give them new social justice propaganda. It's the same. It, it, that's how they view the world. This is me paraphrasing what they believe. It's not how I believe it. Comic books are entertainment. Movies are entertainment. Video games are entertainment. Guns are fun to shoot. Okay? Uh, tanks are even better to go shoot. But uh, <laughs> I've never done, I, I guarantee you this. I've never fired a tank. I've never drove a tank, but I'm quite certain it is fun as hell. All right. I don't have to be told that it's fun. No one has to educate me on it being fun. I'm quite certain it will be fun to drive around, run over some old cars in a junkyard, maybe blow up a a few cars with a cannon, unload onto some dummies with the, uh, 50 cal when i say dummies i mean like crash test dummies that have no feelings whatsoever and won't mind me putting bullets to them i would love to do that i think it would be fun there are people that look at that and say how could you think that was fun well i don't know put a ribbon around my head pretend i'm effing uh sylvester stallone and rambo it it seems like i would have a lot of fun doing that (laughs) it's it's not very hard okay The, the recipe for it's not very difficult but here's here here we go on to the main point, okay? Because I wanted to read through all of that and get to this one point. So if you got this far in the video, good job because you're you're getting to the meat of the video right now. We got through we got through that portion of it. We're now getting to the meat of it. A male then expressed his desire to protect a local mom and pop convenience store from potential riders and looters. We're gonna skip on down here a bit. So we're going down, 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 down. Here's the response to his nonsense because I mean he says nothing racist. He says he's in support of good cops. Here's why you can't win. You can articulate your your argument. You can write your argument. You can craft it to where there's zero racism whatsoever. These motherfuckers are going to find racism. Okay? They're, They're going to find it. Whether you want them to find it or not, they're going to find it. Here we go. Carolyn, I hate racist hens. Stephen Amell ain't been S for fault years. He's a racist, misogynist douche. And a, a CW protected him. Let his moment of reckoning finally come to. Back there, what did he say? Even, even up here where he's talking about local mom and pop business, he's like, I want to get out there and keep those businesses from being burnt to the ground. Nothing he says is racist in the entire article. He even mentions that, he even proves that police departments are diverse. But, even though he articulates it to just this one group, this mob of morons don't care. We'll keep going. You think that's that's out of line? You think that's the minority? No, 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 watch. This is the majority of these idiots. A couple of you uninfo- unfollowed me after my tweet this morning. So I'm going to say it again. Stephen Amell is a racist, selfish, effing a-hole. If you don't like that, then bye. Like, what's the proof? Where's your proof that he's racist? Oh, oh, he said that a lot of cops are good, but it's a few of them that are bad, and we just need to get rid of the bad ones. Okay. He's saying that we should protect the stores from looting and getting an arson, from looters and arsonists. Oh, that makes him racist. See, the thing people don't realize is, and you're going to see this right over here. And here, here's a thread of all the BS moments from Stephen Amell's recent podcast. <laughs> How did everyone miss that this man is a racist? It's not like he's been hiding it. Well, because he hasn't had anything to hide. And what you're defining as racism right now wasn't racist before when you thought he was on your side. Okay? Here's the thing about these people. They don't buy into the traditional. And I know there's a lot of listeners. I know there's some of my listeners going to say, well, you know, how... How are they saying he's racist? Because they don't buy into the to the traditional definition of racist, which is universally understood. Because, and this is the reasoning they don't like it, they don't want racism to be a virus because viruses can be cured. 
we can provide a vaccine of knowledge for the virus of racism, and that's ultimately what stops it. We give you a, a vaccine of uh, knowledge, we cure your ignorance, and that cures racism. Okay, racism is just a symptom of major ignorance on a person. Now, what SJWs want to do is they want to go in and redefine racism as a genetic disease that affects one group of people. Give you three guesses what that group of people is in the comments, and I promise you, you'll only need one. All right? They want all their problems in this world not to be a virus that can be cured, but they want it to be an incurable genetic disease that is only treatable with you getting down on your knees in front of them because it gives them power. It's just simple manipulation of guilt. That's all this comes down to. These people didn't miss his racism. They manufactured it. They manifested it out of thin air by simply saying some of the stuff that he's done is racist. They get on they get on places like Twitter and it's like, prove, prove he is a racist. Well, you can go look at his podcast and see for yourself. They know full well there's nothing there that's racist. They just want to call him a racist because the word racism to them. Um, I did a video a while back where I said that SJWs look at words like Harry Potter looks at spells. To them, it's, they, they might as well be coming in there going, racism, sexism, misogyny, homophobia, you are banished. You have no right to speak anymore. And that, that's how this is. They're words of power. It's, um, there's actually a scripture there's actually a story in the Bible that, that is absolutely like this. There's a bunch of uh, wizards in the in biblical text. <laughs> I'm going to get the Bible, but it's it's actually pretty good. Trust me, just just go with me on it. There's actually a, a story in the Bible where, you know, Paul and them are out. You know, they're casting demons out, and these wizards see them cast the demons out. One of them hears him say, in the name of Jesus, I cast you out in Hebrew. And so they're like, oh, we now know their special word for casting these demons out. They go try to cast the demon out of this one man. And they say, in the name of Jesus, we cast you out. The demon looks at him and says, I'm familiar with Jesus' apostles. I'm familiar with Jesus' followers. You're not one of them. And then he proceeds to beat the shit out of him. <laughs> I mean, the Bible has the Bible has a lot of good stories. And if you read, like, the, the, really, the small ones are really funny at times. <laughs> They're really entertaining. <laughs> Because afterwards, like this guy's beating the shit out of these guys, and and the apostle, the the disciples, look at these uh these other Christians look at Paul, and it says, and they marveled at what happens. <laughs> it's like, how did that not work? And Paul was like, because we are the true believers, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> just watch. It's like so. Apparently, these guys are getting the crap beat out of them. They're just watching at the moment, just like you know, sipping a little bit of uh, fresh wine or drinking some water and, and sitting back watching. Like, wow. <laughs> but anyway, off off of that dead rabbit, we'll keep going here. If Stephen Amell didn't learn anything about racism working eight years with a black person by his side. It won't be in just one day that he will learn, especially if he if he doesn't want to. After all, he's never saw racism happen. He knows a lot of good cops. He'll never win. Like I said, it, there's no salvation. There's no mercy with these people. That's what you got to realize. There's no mercy. There's no salvation. I'm not saying this as a Christian point. I'm saying this as simple put of, if you have a friend, if you have a wife that's understanding, like my wife, if one of us, we, we understand. If we mess up, we can come apologize to the other person and we will forgive them. The salvation is getting is being forgiven. All right? There is no salvation with SJWs. If you are accused of rape, you can walk in front of them, cut off your dick and say, there, see... I cut off my dick in solidarity to prove that I am not a rapist. They will go, good, now get your ass on that pole so we can burn you. They will not lament. They are, once you show we. it's like, what are, the, what are the spiders from the Lost in Space movie? Where the kid's shooting them and he, you know, Will Robinson's in the robot hologram thing. He's controlling the robot and he's shooting the, um, he's fighting them like in a video game. And he shoots one of them and it, it just barely nicks it, but it causes blood to show. And the other spiders just jump in there and they start eating him alive. He's like, eh, they eat their wounded. 
And then they then his dad uses that later on to kill um what is it? Spider Smith afterward. It's the same thing with SJWs. When they smell weakness, they kill their own. They will literally eat their own. I've told people a lot of times, it's one of the reasons why uh, 4chan is so successful because all they do is they they produce a meme which causes just a few of the SJWs in the community to bleed. And once they smell that blood, all the other SJWs turn on. Almost immediately they will turn and they get crazier and crazier and crazier. And I think that's the strategy of 4chan to make them look as crazy as possible. Anyway... A prominent accuser of Amel's, a prominent accuser of Amel's was Image Comics writer T. Franklin, who asserted that Amel had been showing us his racist ways for quite a while. So here's another thing that SJWs do: they will drag your family in. It's the equivalent of, say, Tony Stark is fighting the Mandarin, and the Mandarin is getting whooped. And so what does he do to win the... You know, he gets whooped, he comes back again to fight Tony Stark. But this time he puts a bomb around Pepper's neck and he says, ha ha ha, Tony Stark. It is like wired to his consciousness. And if you knock me unconscious, Tony Stark, you knock me unconscious, Iron Man, your wife Pepper Potts will, our head will blow off. And then, you know, the hero, that's a really good one. Why don't they do crap like that more in Marvel Comics? I swear to God, I could save that. And I swear to God, I could save comic books within just a three issues, and that would. <coughs> I don't want to save it now because the the people that are running it have run it so far underground. Once you save it, they'll just they'll keep going on and screwing people over. It needs to die. I hate to be like that. So you see it here, F. Stephen Amell. He's been showing us his racist ways for quite a while now, and his wife. So now he's going to drag his wife in there as a hostage to try and you know weaken him down. They'll use your family. They'll use your pets. They'll go after your job. They'll go talk. I think uh, Tug right now has one SJW who is trying to drag his grandfather into this and say his grandfather has been murdering people on his property but, uh, or implying that his grandpa is murdering people and burying them on his property. These people are sick. They'll weaponize child support. They um, Renthemus and them tried to weaponize... Uh, against Vic Mignogna, I think it was either Vic Mignogna or someone else, tried to weaponize uh, child protective... No, it was against Tug. They tried to weaponize child protective services against Tug again and get uh, CPS to come in there and take his kids. Which, if you know anything about CPS, once that happens, CPS is on your ass for your life. Whether you come out there and prove you're innocent or not, they they just want to stay after you forever. They got people in there that just won't leave you alone. If, short of a lawsuit, I don't know what you can do to stop them. I mean, it's expensive no matter where you go. Anyway, continuing. This partial accusation garnered a response from a male who stated that if you need some or want some, want to help me better understand, hit me up and we can chat. <laughs> I don't think this is going to go well. You totally nailed me. Hope that makes you feel better. I just followed you, so if you need so if you need something or want to help me better understand, hit me up and we can chat. However, Emil's request for a private and sincere dialogue was met with hostility from Franklin, as the author continued to further accuse Emil of racism and condescendingly fell back on the tired rhetoric that was not her job to educate him. Well, here's the problem, bitch. All right, let's, let's read this real quick. I'm, I'm going to let this out. I'm not the only black woman that has called you out. So I know you've had these conversations. Silence is complicity. Silence is complicity. Does that work in rape? Because that, that seems like a... That seems like something you probably should have thought through a little bit more before you put that on there now. Um, okay, okay. <laughs> she doesn't say, I guess if she doesn't say no, folks, it's okay. <laughs> I mean, damn. While playing ignorant is ludicrous. You're a father and someone in their 30s. You're not new to racism. And if you believe Toronto isn't racist, that's your privilege. 
Uh, one, how does him being a father and in his, I understand that like his thirties, he should have seen racism by now. Like I said, he's probably just treating people with respect, but how does being a father do this? It's like, we're trying to shame him. Like, Oh, you're a father. Oh, you're a Christian. You're saying this. Yeah. It's, it's like some people, when I talk about, you know, I get into arguments, with people online about guns. I've had one, one or two people that are swabbed and say, well, you I, it just doesn't seem like the Christian thing to do to take a gun and, and run someone out of your home with it. And I'm like, um, Jesus beat people in his own temple, which was his house. Cause he's supposed to be God and all that. When you get the intricacies out, you know, Jesus is God at that point. I'm, I'm just explaining this. I'm not pushing religion. Jesus is God. And so he goes in there with a belt and basically whoops a snot out of the tax, out of the people that were selling stuff and their bodyguards. Then later on, Jesus, uh, Later on, Jesus' martial art was discovered by Chuck Norris, and the rest was history. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, this whole thing of it, it's, it's, that's your privilege. Um, I doubt that, because treating someone with respect is not a privilege. It's just something you do. It's good manners. Anyway, continuing on. I love how this woman's got T. Franklin, this country... T. Franklin has failed this country. Yeah, she has failed this country because you won't... Because here, here's the thing. He's asking you for help. And here, here's her response. I shouldn't have to help you understand the things you do and say are harmful. These are... These things that are learned behavior. Okay, you just exp you've just admitted that what he... That this racism is learned. <clears throat> you have an opportunity now to probably educate this guy and fix it but you won't. You don't want to because you want to condemn him. You want to burn him at the stake. That's what we want to do here. Where you learned your white privilege from your white folks, I learned I wasn't shit, wouldn't be shit, and deserved to die because <clears throat> it's what your people taught me. Really. Uh, then maybe your parents should sue the education system. <laughs> Honest, I don't know what else to tell this chick. You, you you should go out there and just sue the public education system because they're the ones that taught you all this, honestly. That's where everyone gets their education is in public school. Go sue them. Sue them for making you feel racist. They probably will will lament. Of course, then I would love to see the public, public school system get sued into oblivion. That'd be hilarious. I'm not sure why your tone is condescending, but I'm not beat for it. And he's he's tweeting you. What what? Where's this tone at that he's tweeting? I've never understood this. Had also in the comments. Tell me how is it that um, we t tell me how you tell someone's tone on Twitter? Because I usually just kind of go in there as if they're laughing and just go from there. Anyway, that hope that that hope that makes you feel better, ain't it, Stephen? Nothing I do or say when I call out racism makes me feel better. Probably because you're lying. You probably have a giant hole in your chest and you're trying to fill it with something that is equally... Well, you're, I'll say it like this. You're probably trying to fill the hole in your chest with something of equal value, which is nothing. Okay? It's not going to fill, fill up anything. If it doesn't make you feel better, probably is because you're a miserable person. I just ended my friendships with white comic creators over racism and I feel shitty. Well, damn, woman. No wonder. You shouldn't feel shitty. You you lost a friend. That's bad. You're not supposed to feel good about it. Look, this is just people getting, this whole nonsense, people getting revenge out of the people over racism. Let me explain revenge real quick. Revenge, you got to dig two graves. One for you, one for the person you're after. All right? Because... You go for revenge over justice, you are going to go too far. And when you go too far, someone's going to come in there and provide justice. Nine times out of ten, they're probably going to kill you over it. Just saying. Anyway, she continues this. After calling Stephen a male out, he wanted me to educate him via DM, not in public, so he followed me. I refuse because I'm on my trampoline. I don't understand that. The trampoline goes up and down. 
I responded and keep it I respond and keep it moving. Here we are, twelve hours later, his avatar is black and he no longer follows or responded. White privilege is well. Well, here's the thing, woman. And, and here's the thing. She steps out here and she tells him he's racist, tells him he's wrong. So he asks for clarification so that he can fix it. You're not interested in fixing it, woman. You're interested in destroying it. That's it. If you tell him what's wrong, then he'll go out and fix it. And you're afraid of him fixing it. Because then without race, without racism in this country, who are you? You're no one. Okay? And this is how SJWs are. Everything's based on race and identity. And once you remove it, well, they have nothing. It's like Lisa Simpson uh, when they do the Kids Football League. She comes in, she's like, I'm going to be, that's right, a girl's going to play foot, boys football. And, 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 and she makes the mistake of running into Ned Flanders, who Ned Flanders is the most, like, I'm going to make everybody happy character. And he goes, well, that's okay if you're going to be a girl. We got two, we got the twins over here going to play. And it's got two twin girls that are in, that are in uh, Springfield. And she goes, oh, well, uh, I don't want to have to play. Why would I want to play? That's okay. Why would I want to play this game when you're playing with the skin of an innocent animal? And he goes, but that's okay. We're using synthetic leather now. We All of our balls and everything are non-harmful to the environment. She goes, I need to go home now because she has nothing. She has no identity whatsoever outside of controversy and solving people's problems. That's how these people are, but they don't solve problems. They go out and they start controversy, and that's their identity afterward. That's why you don't bend the knee of these idiots. Like I said, you, you will not find salvation. You will not find peace. They will destroy you. They will use your family as a hostage. They will destroy your life, your livelihood. They'll try to ruin your relationships. <clears throat> they actually did that one time. Uh with the guy, I can't remember his name, played um, Aiden something, I think it's his name, played uh, Kylo Ren, tried to ruin his relationship with his wife, his wife in real life, to try and see, because they thought if they ruined his relationship with his wife that he would get together with Daisy Riddler in real life, or Daisy Ridley in real life. <clears throat> it was like, these people, they, they want control. They can't make reality their way. If they can't have reality their way, they're going to force it to be their way. They don't care who they kill to get it to get there. But going on, uh, you don't want to educate this guy on what he's wrong. Like I said, you don't want him to change. You want him destroyed. You want him hanging by his neck from the rafters, and that will that will finally make you happy. That will finally end it and bring him peace because you can't actually beat a dead horse. Actually. I take that back. You idiots would probably learn neck after you've killed all of us off. You'd learn necromancy and bring us all back so you can whoop them. What is that? What is that uh, book? The heir apparent, where the warriors keep being brought back to life. Like they can't even escape their captors in death. If SJWs could, like, if they could, they are they are the wizards in the book. Okay, they could bring you back to life and force you to fight again. You have no peace, not even in death. We will, we will never give you peace in death. They will go If they could, they would go down to hell and harass you. They would go to heaven and throw rocks at it. I, I shit you not. It would not matter where you go. These people are so mental. They would follow you into death just to make sure you torment. They, they, that's what they will do. They will go down there and they, they critique the devil on tormenting you. I swear to God. <sighs> Here we go. Just to be perfectly clear, the irony of Stephen Amell demanding a verified black woman. Is that like a dog? Like, I've got a purebred German shepherd that's registered. <laughs> do, do, do black people go get registered? <laughs> Fuck, man. What's wrong with these people? You're making me think of all kinds of weird stuff. A verified black woman. <laughs> I just see them like putting a chip in the back of her neck like they do a German Shepherd or something. Yeah, see? All right, now now we know it tells all the breeds and lineage of the... That's the most racist shit I've ever heard, man. Verified black woman. To educate him on the day that's supposed to be about amplifying and supporting black voices ain't lost on me. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. 
if you're amplifying black voices and he asks you to educate him, it's not irony. He is literally asking you to amplify your voice for blackness. To educate him, a lowly white man, on blackness and racism. The irony here is you want your voice amplified, but you don't want to amplify it and fix one man and start small. You, you don't really want to fix anything. You're just sitting there saying you want to do this. A man knew what he was doing. He had no intention on responding or learning. He probably did. You just never gave him the chance. My God. Here we go. <laughs> oh, hang on. I got to read this. Let's see this. Bingo Love author has also taken to unironically demanding that any news outlets who supported her publicly on her publicly available tweets or any outlet who reported on her, no, never mind, sorry about that, who reported on her publicly available tweets, such as IB, IMDB and US Weekly, pay her for the use of her said tweets and her articles. Uh, okay, let me see this here. Why? Question, did you get paid for writing that article about me in a mail, and are you getting paid to write about my tweets? I highly suggest whatever you money you got gets deposited in my cash app. Okay, yeah, that's going to be a big, giant F you. <laughs> I'd send her the nuclear middle finger if y'all haven't seen that meme. It's amazing. This isn't a request, though. I need to get paid for my work because I wrote that article with my tweets because your comics are probably shit. That's why. Okay? Y'all been destroying the comic industry. It's kind of ironic. You're sitting here destroying the comic industry, writing for the most most tiniest of minorities you can write for and now you're suddenly asking the one guy that you claim is a racist you're trying to guilt him or you're trying to guilt people who report on this into paying you money i would love to see this woman tell me to pay her money i would love to see her tell me that it's going to be nuclear holocaust level tweets <laughs> oh my god i would love that just godzilla fire Y'all gently remind her that she's getting paid because of me. She's trying to start crap with people. Look, you're already, just because your comics are shit doesn't mean we have to pay for your failure, okay? You done said you failed this country. Why should we pay a failure? Hey, Paula Daly, 1922. Were you paid to make this article? Basically, people made an article. She just wants them to pay her for it. Not take it down, just pay. And I mean, uh, this is a this is like awesome meltdown. Amel kind of just annihilated her without even trying. That appears to be the end of this. I mean, like I said, this will if you bend the knee to these people, you you have nothing to look forward to. Like I said, uh, you I I will say this. This is how you deal with SJWs. Okay, when they rear their ugly head, when they spit their venom at you, you grab the nearest thing you can find and you start beating them over the head with it until they crawl back into the hole they come from. We're, we're all sharing this space of the internet, okay? And our fandoms have to share spaces. Remember that with everything in the room, everyone in the room, the SJWs are the snake. You've got to watch them because every time they stick their heads out, every time they slither out of the shadows over to start, you know, try and bite people, everyone needs to get their clubs and whatever object you can find, whatever argument you've got, and beat on them until they slither back into their hole and stay on their corner of the world, stay in their corner of the room. Because only then will we finally start having peace in comic books. Only then will we finally start having peace. Only then will we finally stop seeing these companies bow down is when you see these SJWs getting just annihilated on Twitter. Um, you don't need to give in. You give in, it's you're just throwing pearls to swine. As I said before, it's just going to be pearls to swine. They don't understand the apology. They don't see the value of the apology. They can't compute what the apology is for. They respond to it as admission, apology, admission of guilt, destroy. And that's how their response is. I'm the last Raider, folks. Hit me up in the comments down there. Tell me what you think about the video. Also, be sure to like if you enjoyed the video comment 
Uh, I've already told you to comment, actually. Uh, subscribe and hit the bell for notification if you're new to the channel. And as always, stay safe, stay frosty, and I'll see you guys in the next video.